revenue, fundamental theorem of arithmetic, uh, prime factorization, word problems, certain word problems from that, irrational numbers proved by the method of contradiction. Uh, how to how irrational number irrationality is proved using the method of contradiction is also there. Proving root two is irrational, three plus two root five is irrational, etc. Decimal expansions of rational numbers. Finding whether a given rational number has terminating or non-terminating repeating type decimal expansion. Okay, these are all the concepts you have in this lesson in your uh, syllabus uh, for this academic year. Now let us uh, uh, revise what is fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Fundamental theorem of arithmetic clearly says every composite number can be expressed or factorized as a product of primes and this prime factorization is unique apart from the order in which the prime factors occur. Uh, the prime factors can occur in different ways but still the prime factorization is unique and uh, you have the prime factors same number of prime factors uh, in this same same prime factors same prime factors will be there in this next so for example 120 is 2 into 2 into 2 into 3 into 5 uh, that can be further written as uh, 2 cube into 3 square into uh, this one and uh, one more 8,332 is also written like that HCF and LCM by prime factorization method let us find HCF and HC LCM of these two three numbers let us prime factorize each of these one is like this 36 is divided by 2 the smallest prime number and further by 2 again to get 9 and 9 cannot be divided by 2 further so we took uh, uh, 3 another prime number and this one and 2 72 also is divided in uh, by this in this method it is called short division in this method we don't write only the uh, quotients you all know that and this is the prime factorization of 120 and we write like this 2 square into 3 square 72 is 2 cube into 3 square and 120 is 2 cube into 3 into 5 and when you take the HCF it is the product of smallest powers uh, power of each common prime factor involved in these numbers in the prime factorization for example here you see 36 2 square is here even here also 2 square is there here also 2 square is 2 is there as a prime number and 2 square is the smallest power for all out of all these therefore 2 square is taken as one of the factors for HCF and 3 is also involved and 3 to the power 1 is the smallest factor so 2 square into 3 that is 12 is the HCF next LCM is 2 cube into 3 square into 5 that is product of all greatest powers of each prime factor involved in the numbers so here uh, uh, we write this way and now this is the LCM now coming to the HC, HCM and uh, LCF and LCM of three more numbers it is found like this 12 15 and 21 they are small numbers therefore we are taking like this quickly we are taking the uh, prime factorization 2 square into 3 3, 3 into 5, 3 into 7, and etc. In the next example here, you can see 8, 9, and 25 are the numbers given, but all those are four primes. They don't have any common factor. In that case, HCF will become 1, and LCM is their product, of course. Product of primes or product of the numbers, both are same. It is 1800. Next, we have uh, to prove or uh, verifying that uh, LCM multiplied by HCF is equal to product of numbers. We have three examples here. One I will explain and others I will show you quickly so that you have a good practice for this. Let us see 26 and 91. The prime factorization of 26 is 2 into 13, 91 is 7 into 13. Therefore, HCF is 13 and LCM is 2 into 7 into 13. That is 
182. Multiply 18, 26, and 91, that is the product of numbers, it becomes 2366. Whereas product of uh, LCM and HCF is 2366. Product of numbers is equal to product of their HCF and LCM. It is verified here. Similarly, for 510 and uh, 92, the numbers are a little bit, therefore, we have taken the prime factorization using the short division method again this way. 2 divides 510, 255 times. Again, 3, 3. Uh, 8 are 25, 1 left 15, so 3 5 are 15. Again, 8, 5, 5 17. 2, 46 times, 2, 23 times. And we write the prime factorization for both. 2 into 3 into 5 into 17, it is for 510. For 92, it is 2 into 2 into 23. So HCM, only one common factor is there for both, that is 2. Uh, therefore, HCF is 2. And LCM is 2 into 2 into 2, that is actually. Two twos are there. Here one two is there. Highest power is two square. So two into two only we take. And three is a factor, prime factor. It is here, but it is not here. Still, we have to take three to the power of one. And then five is one time it is occurring. Seventeen is occurring is one time. Twenty-three is occurring one time. When you multiply all these, you get twenty-three thousand four hundred sixty. That is the LCM. Now Product of numbers is 510 into 92, that is 46,920. Product of LCM and HCF is also 46,920. Therefore, we prove that product of numbers is equal to product of their HCF and LCM. Then, for 336 and 54 also can be taken this way, like this. So, 336, prime factorization of 336 is this, and HCF is 6. LCM is 3024 and the products are the same, of course. You can verify it very easily. Are you all following? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Good, good. Yes, sir. So, okay. That's okay. Yes, now, let's uh, do another uh, uh, problem. Uh, it is a, it's like application on, uh, of uh, LCM and HCF concept, LCM and HCF. LCM and HCF of two numbers is given. 12 and uh, 240, one of the numbers is given 48. You have to find the other. Now, in the previous case, we verified LCM into HCF is equal to the product of numbers. Therefore, we use that particular concept here to uh, find the unknown number here. Product of two numbers equal to product of their HCF and LCM. This is the first step we write. In the second step, the numbers, one of the numbers is 48. Therefore, we write 48 into other number is equal to LCM and to HCF, that is 12 into 240, or HCF into LCM, of course. Now, when you multiply these two, it will be like this. So, the other number is nothing but the product of LCM and HCF by 48 here, meaning 12 into 240 by 48. And 12 and 48 have common factor 12. So, 12 is cancelled, 12 ones, 12 fours. And 4 divides 240 60 times. So, answer here is 60. That is the second number. Okay. Now, those who want can note down quickly or take a screenshot. And in the next one. Okay. Now, in the next one. HCF and LCM is expressible in the form of 45x minus 225. Find the value of x. Here, HCF of 45 and 225 is expressed in this form. We have to find the value of x. This is another typical question on this particular concept. You have to find the HCF, of course, and little extension also is there. First, find the HCF. HCF is equal to, first, 45 is 3 into 3 into 5 because 3, 3 is a 9, 9, 5 is a 45. 225 is 15, 15. 15 is 3 into 5. So, 3 into 3 into 5 into 5 will be the prime factorization of 225. And HCF very easily can be found because one 3 common factor, another 3 is also common, and 5 is common, 3 square into 5, or 3 into 3 into 5 is the HCF, it is 45. And now, 45x minus 225 is HCF, that is 45 again. So, 225 will bring here, 45x equal to 45 plus 225, 270, so x equal to 270 by 45, it is nothing but 6. Okay? It's a nice question. It may be for one mark or MCQs. 
sometimes for two marks if your luck is good and remember children six marks uh, are uh, allotted for this chapter for the main exam for the final exam therefore concentrate on this chapter all the six marks you should get and they are all easy all the problems are easy on this chapter okay now let us move on to another one so that root 5 is irrational very simple question very simple question the irrationality of a number we are going to prove now we use the method of contradiction okay in contrary let us assume that root 5 is rational and when a number is rational it can be expressed in the form p by q therefore i will say root 5 is equal to p by q where p and q are integers and they are co primes also now squaring on both sides you get p square by q square of course i am writing p square by q square this this side this this side is equal to root 5 square means 5 you all know that and it is now p square equal to 5 into q square by cross multiplication this is equation 1 next so 5 is a factor of q square because p square is equal to 5 into q square therefore 5 is a factor of p square now when a number is a factor of square of a number square of another it is also a factor of that particular number 5 is a factor of p square meaning 5 is a factor of p also now when 5 is a factor of p 5 can be expressed in terms of p like this or p can be expressed sorry p can be expressed in terms of 5 uh, like this p equal to 5c for some integer c now equation 1 will become like this in equation 1 p square is there so p square means 5c square here is equal to 5 into q square as it is so it is 25c square equal to 5q square meaning again here q square i write here c square i write here 5 divides 25 5 ones and 5 5 is here so you can very well write q square equal to 5c square q square equal to 5c square therefore we uh, you can claim that 5 is a factor of q square therefore 5 is a factor of q also earlier we got 5 is a factor of p now we got that 5 is a factor of q therefore 5 is a factor of both the numbers p and q it's a common factor but our assumption that is that uh, p and q are co primes it is not true here that means we got a a, a reverse a contradictory uh, uh, answer or contradictory proof here 5 is a factor of both the numbers which is a contradiction to our assumption now therefore our assumption itself is wrong what is our assumption root 5 is rational if it is wrong what is what is right root 5 is irrational is the right answer is the right answer therefore root 5 is irrational children in place of root 5 if i write root 2 process will be the same nothing will change except for this number here 25 square you will get 4 4 c square here it will be uh, sorry 2 c square 4 c is 4 c square equal to 5 q square again so this is the process process for all this root uh, this uh, proving the irrationality is same so shall we move on to the next one yes sir okay. yes sir now i can show the process here root 2 now I assume that root 2 is rational. Therefore, root 2 is p by q. Squaring on both sides, I'll get p square by q square equal to 2. It is p square equal to q square. That means 2 is a factor of p square. 2 is a factor of p. Again, I let p equal to 2c for some integer. Therefore, 2c square equal to 2 into q square. 4c square equal to 2q square. Again, I uh, take out take away 2 in both 2 ones and 2 two twos. So it is 2c square equal to q square, or q square equal to 2c square. Therefore, 2 is a factor of q square, or 2 is a factor of q also. Therefore, 2 is factor of both. Therefore, our this is a contradiction to our assumption. Therefore, our assumption is wrong, and so root 2 is irrational is right. No difference at all in the process, children. No difference in the process, and it comes like a 
a fixed pro a fixed procedure for any uh, any proof by contradiction uh, for irrationality irrationality of the numbers. <clears throat> Even you can try this using root seven, root eleven, like that. You try that at home. Now, very often asked the question. This may be for four marks if your luck is good, or at least three marks you may expect it in the final exam, right? Right now, let us move on to the next one. Here, yeah. proving that three plus two root five is irrational. How do we prove that? Very simple. Of course, here you have to take it for granted. Root five is irrational. When root five is irrational, product of a rational and irrational number is always irrational. Therefore, two root five is irrational. Sum of a rational number and irrational number is also irrational. So therefore, three plus two root five is irrational. But we have to prove it through our process here. Now again, we use the method of contradiction. Say that three plus root five, two root five is rational. Therefore, we can very well express this one in the form p by q, where p and q are co-primes. And then we say uh, this two root five will keep like this. And two root five. Of course, I have to bring it this side. I have to put a minus symbol here. And right, p by q I will take to the LHS side, and the two root five I will bring to the RHS side. Now, on the left hand side, all the numbers are integers. Therefore, the whole of LHS is the whole of LHS is is rational, but RHS is irrational. Uh, can we equate uh, apples and mangoes? They are different fruits. They are not equal. Similarly, a rational and irrational number cannot be compared. They are not equal. So they never can be compared even. Therefore, here LHS is rational, but RHS is irrational. We cannot uh, compare them. So it can never be equal like this. Therefore, it is a contradiction to our proof. Our assumption is wrong. Therefore, three plus two root five is irrational. It's a simple proof. It may be for uh, two marks uh, sometimes. Okay. All right. Now let's move on to uh, another uh, concept. That is, find whether given rational number, given rational number, has terminating or non-terminating and repeating type decimal expansion. But you should not uh, divide actually. Let x be the rational number whose decimal expansion terminates. Then x can be expressed in the form of p by q, where p and q are co-prime, and the prime factorization of q is of the form 2 to the power of n multiplied by pi to the power of m, where n and m are non-negative integers. Non-negative integers. For example, 13 by 3125 here. The 3,125. If you do, if you take the prime factorization, it is 5 into 5 into 5 into 5 into 5, 5 to the power of 5. The denominator is of the form 5 to the power of m. Very well, you can write 2 to the power of. It is nothing but it is of the form 2 to the power of n into 5 to the power of m. How can you say that? It is simple. 5 to the power of m is also 5 to the power of m multiplied by Uh, two to the power of two to the power of zero, two to the power of zero. That means this zero is now in the in the place of n. It is of the form two to the power of n into pi to the power of m. Therefore, it has a terminating decimal expansion. Now, thirty-five by fifty, but thirty-five by fifty is not in the standard form of a rational number. Because it has the denominator and numerator, they have common factors. That is five. Now we eliminate it. As we eliminate it, you get seven by ten. You can very well say seven by ten is zero point seven. It is terminating, but we can prove by this method also. It is two into five, nothing but two to the power of m into five to the power of m, five to the power of n, or in vice versa, of course. Hence the decimal. Is a is a, a terminating decimal expansion. If, if the decimal number has terminating decimal expansion. Now let us try this one. 
15 by 1600 as terminating decimal expansion or not. If, the, if it has terminating a decimal expansion, you have to find uh, not able to get to go to this one quickly. Now he is away. Now it has uh, firstly we keep it in the standard form. 15 and 1600 they have common factors a 5 is a common factor for them and then when you take away 5 it happens like this actually children 15 and 1600 it is now uh, i will uh, remove uh, 1600 here and 5 threes are 15 and here 5 threes are 15 one left, one zero ten, five twos are ten, and a zero. So three by three twenty is the standard form of this this uh, rational number. What is that? Three by three twenty. Three by three twenty. So for three twenty, I am taking the uh, prime factorization. What is the prime factorization of three twenty? You divide by two, you get one sixty. Divide by two again. 80, again by 2, 40, again by 2, 20, again by 2, 10, but uh, 10, 2, 5 is a 10, 5 is a prime number, we leave this uh, prime factorization here, so 320, prime factorization of 320 is 2 into 2 into 2, into 2 into 2 into 2 into 5, it is 2 to the power of 6 into 5, so 15 by 1600 or uh, 1600 equal to 3 by 320, is equal to 3 by 2 power 6 into 5 and this can be written like this 3 by 2 to the power of 6 into 5 let us multiply the denom numerator and denominator by 5 to the power of 5 so that 2 and 5 have the same same exponent here then it will become 3 into 5 to the power of 5 on the top I mean in the numerator side and 2 to the power of 6 into 5 to the power of 6. It is nothing but 2 into 5, 4 power 6, or 10 to the power of 6, or this is 1 followed by 6 zeros. Again, here 5 to the power of 5 is 5 into 5 into 5 into 5 into 5 into 5. Into 5. When you multiply all those, you get 3125. You can multiply and check children. Because 5 square is 25. 5 square into 5 square, 5 to the power of 4. 625, 625 into 5, 3125. Now, by 10 to the power of 6, multiply on the numerator side, you get 9375, 1 followed by 6 zeros here. Therefore, it is 009375. Now, how many decimal places are here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 decimal places. That means this decimal, this uh, uh, rational number has a terminal terminating decimal expansion it terminates after six places how can you decide very simple children you need not follow all this procedure if it is asked as an mcq question find out the prime factorization of the uh, denominator here and see whether two and five are there or not first decide whether it is having terminating decimal expansion or not if it is having decimal expansion here like this then 2 power 6, highest power you see out of 2 and 5, then whatever, whichever is the number, higher number, that is the, that, that after that many places, the decimal terminates, the decimal terminates. So 2 power 6, that is the uh, highest number, 6 is the highest number, so uh, it, this decimal terminates after 6 places. So this is how you can decide uh, the term, uh, decimal expansion of a rational number. Remember children, sometimes you may have in the prime factorization of denominator other than 2 and 5, any other or more number or any other number than uh, 2 and 5. In that case, you can very well write the decimal has uh, a non-terminating non repeating type decimal expansion. Simple. Okay? That's that.